Good morning. I am leaving Woods Hole Hostel. Had a great night's sleep here. Um, highly recommended. Um, if you could make it here, do try. It's it's a great hostel. Owners are awesome, and uh, the bed was extremely comfortable. Hostel is really clean. Um, I'll write more about it in my blog, but I, I'm really glad I made it here yesterday. Um, it was a great way to end my first day on the trail. I'm going to try and make it to uh, Dismal Falls Campground, which I've heard is really gorgeous. Um, really beautiful, nice place to, to stay. 14.2 um, miles, plus the half mile I've got to do to get to the trail, so almost 15 miles today, but I'm getting an earlier start. It's a chilly morning, but I know I'm going to warm up quick, so I'm not worried about it. But I do have my fleece in a very easy to retrieve location on top of my pack. So, just in case, but I don't think I'm going to need it. But it's probably about 50, I don't know, early, uh, low 50s this morning. A little breezy, feels amazing. All right, heading down the road. I will talk with y'all later. Bye. First white blaze of the day, and I guess I didn't learn my lesson from my shakedown hike because I went the wrong way again, missed the trailhead. Um, only not even a quarter mile, so I probably wasted half, almost half a mile today. That's okay, I'm learning. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, I've just come down the trail there. Whoa. There's a white blaze telling me to go this way, but I come up here and and then where do I go? Uh, whoa, shoot. Um, I don't think the trail goes down there. So I guess I'm climbing up this. But there, oh, there's the white blaze. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but it's up there on that tree. So yeah. I'm climbing up this. Yay! Whew, I made it up. All that. Up to here. Could have used some knee pads. <laughs> but I made it. Alright, onward. Man, I wish you all could experience this in person. I've watched a lot of through hiking videos. And I've seen a lot of trail on those videos. And seriously, just can't capture what it looks like in person. I still can't believe I'm here sometimes. It's, it's, it's so beautiful. Just the sound of the forest is amazing. Um, the wind and the leaves and an occasional bird. Um, but just so quiet. It's just, it's so beautiful. And there's just no way a video could ever do justice to this. <laughs> there's just no way. Okay, there's my next white blaze. Moving on. Okay, so I just came over all that mess that fell across the trail. And <laughs> there's the trail. And that big old tree is right on top of it. So it looks like people have maybe been going around this way. Because I'm sure not going under there. And I'm sure not going over it. All right. Finding a way around. Okay, I've got some easy track here, so that'll be a good time to record something. I'll try not to trip and fall. Um, so, a six time through hiker named Twisty um, came up from behind me and uh, we talked for a little bit. Man, he was flying down the trail. And I was just picking my way over these rocks and roots and things, and he was just flying. So, yeah, he's done this before for sure. Um, anyway, it was really nice meeting Twisty. He said he's been a trail angel for 25 years, 
and this is his sixth time through hiking the trail. And I'm telling you, he was flying, flying, flying over those rocks and stuff. I was amazed. He's like a through hiking superhero or something. I was impressed. Anyway, pushing on. Talk to you later. I've got a little bit of easier terrain. Still kind of rocky, but it's flat. So, it's about time for me to stop, stop for lunch. Energy's waning just a little bit. Um, ran into another hiker heading, this one's heading north. Um, Marlon from the Florida Keys. I asked him as if this was his evacuation and he said, yep, yeah, getting to higher ground. So, yeah, I feel bad. I, man, his place is gonna get slammed. Um, super, super nice young man. Um, talked briefly and he said that, oh crap, now I'm going uphill. He said that uh, Twisty was a good half hour ahead of me. <laughs> Not surprised. He was really hauling. Um, so yeah, this is where I'm at. I'm headed to Dismal Falls uh, campsite, which I've heard is a really sweet place to camp. Not sure how much water will be in the falls, but I'm hoping it'll be a decent water source. So I'm hearing that it's pretty dry up through here. Uh, springs and creeks are pretty dry, so, but I've been bringing extra water. Didn't drink all my water yesterday. I'm not sweating out here at all. It's really nice and cool. It's probably in the 50s to low 60s at the most. So it's really, really great for hiking. I'm really enjoying the weather. Okay, I'm about to head uphill. Hopefully my last uphill for the day and then I've got a really long descent into the campground. Sorry, didn't mean to tilt the camera. Um, so hopefully it's not a rocky one like yesterday's was. Virginia has got a lot of rocks, man. My feet are feeling it. <laughs> but it's all good. I'm getting better at, I'm, I'm going, I'm able to go a little bit faster than yesterday. I'm getting a little bit better at deciding a lot quicker where to put my feet and uh, haven't stumbled nearly as much today as I did yesterday. So that's good. All right. All right, y'all, I wanna get this day done. Heading uphill now. I'll talk at you later, bye. Made it to my highest peak for the day. And here's my view. This is kind of amazing. I can't believe I climbed up this high. Whew. I think, hang on. I think that way over there, just to the right of that tree might be Parisburg. That may be where I came from and then traveled along this mountain here. I think, I don't know. There's no way of knowing, I'm not sure. But I think I'm going that way. Wow. Definitely worth a climb. I might just sit here and eat my lunch. Alright, talk to you guys later. It's my first water source on the AT. There was probably another one that I passed on my first day. There was a sign that said spring and there's a trail, but I, I didn't need water so I didn't go down there. Um, but a hiker come in the other direction and told me um, if I come to a water source and I have room for more water to get it because um, things are kind of dry up here. So as much as I hate to do it, I'm adding a liter of water to my pack. There we go. Look at this pretty little creek I get to cross. I mean, it is in the green tunnel, but yeah, this would have been a good water source. 
I'd known it was up here. Very nice. Alright, onward. My first footbridge. I think this is Dismal Creek. Alright, onward. I've just come into this clearing and I've been looking at the trail so much because of all the rocks, but and then I got some really good trails, so I was walking really fast, still looking down, and I come to this clearing and I look up, and there's a lake over there. Or a really big pond. <laughs> but oh beautiful. Yeah, it's a not a very big pond. But it makes me wish I had all afternoon and, and a fishing pole. <laughs> all right, onward. I'm really trying to make Dismal Falls by six o'clock. And based on my previous pace, I don't know, but I've got good trail right now, so I'm really gonna book it and make the most of it. See you down the trail. This is really frustrating. So I'm coming down the AT, and there's these signs that say restoration area. Do not travel beyond this sign. But you know what? When I take the other path on the other side of this pond, there are no white blazes. I walked for quite a while, and when I checked my GPS location, it said I was way off the trail. The only way I know I'm on the trail is because of Gut Hooks app and the GPS. There's a trail going off that way, there's a trail that way, a trail that way, so many bloody trails, and none of them have a white blaze. None. What is up with that? What is up with that? I still got over six miles to do in less than about three hours. Well, I'm sorry. I don't want to get stuck and lost out here. Um, I'm sorry, but I don't see I have any choice but to go where Gut Hook says to go. Okay, so that was a huge waste of time. That trail just led me right around the pond and back to where I turned around and on the GPS, I'm still like off the trail. There's a well-worn trail going this way. Not a single white blaze. There's a trail I came from. I And there's horse crap all over this trail and I thought the AT was a, a footpath only trail but I don't know no white blaze here big fail big fail I really don't know if I'm gonna make it to that campsite now I've wasted so much time and I didn't have enough as it was I'm gonna keep going but I'm really, really pissed that I can't find a white blaze. But this is the most obvious well-worn trail, so I'm going to take it and see what happens. Here we go. Okay, so there's no trail where the gut hooks, uh, where the satellite says there should be. And I'm going up this trail again and still no white blazes. And it's, it's now going on 4 o'clock. There's no way I'm going to make it to Dismal Falls in time so i'm heading back a quarter mile to wapiti shelter which i really didn't want to stay at but um yeah i'm really really pissed right now <laughs> really really angry this wide open space with so many trails coming off of it and not one of them is marked with a white blaze I'm pretty angry and it's kind of ruined my day but you know that's, that's what the trail does you know sometimes it gives you a great day and sometimes it gives you a day that sucks the thing is this was a pretty good day because um, the miles were easier I mean there were hard spots but it wasn't anything like my first day and um, I thought well today's a day I can really put in some extra miles and the trail was starting to get nicer too with less rocks and stuff. But um, I'm, I have no idea where I am, if I'm even on the trail. Because again, no white blazes.
Not one anywhere in this campsite. Not a single white blaze along any trail around here. And there's probably at least three trails. <coughs> anyway, better get moving. <coughs> Sorry, this cough's coming back. Talk to you later. Okay, it's just after four and I've made it to Wapiti Shelter. I'm, I don't know what mile it is. Um, I can't see a single tree anywhere that is suitable for hanging a bear bag. <laughs> You'd think the shelters that don't have proper trees, that they'd put cables there or a bear box or something. <sighs> they tell you and tell you to hang your bear bag. Um, but these trees, look at this. I mean, that branch is low enough, but that won't hold anything. There's, there's just not, <laughs> there's not a tree anywhere that I could hang a bear bag. And there's no cables and there's no box. So what is a hiker to do? Um, I don't know. I guess I could go walk off in the woods somewhere and, and see if there's some trees trees out there that'll work, but right now it's not looking too promising. Well, I said I wouldn't complain about the trail, but this isn't a com complaining about the trail. This is complaining about how the trail is managed, I guess. I'm beat. There's no way I could have could have made it to Dismal Falls. Um, no way. Well, I didn't even get on the trail till like nine o'clock because, well, I got out of the hostel at eight. But then, <clears throat> I, uh, I went walking down the road and missed the trail again and uh, I've learned to check check my location on gut hooks often if I'm not seeing a white blaze or which is what I did up there it looks it looks like the trail was rerouted because they're restoring the area around the pond so they rerouted but they don't put a white blaze and there's a there's another trail going off in another direction and there's just no no excuse for that why they would reroute the trail and then not give you a white blaze to say oh this way not that way anymore this way so I'll go ahead and take that trail it, maybe it's a detour trail and it'll eventually get me back um, on the AT you know when I look at the satellite right now if I go on that trail and I look at the satellite it shows me being way off the trail but it's like to get back on the trail I'd have to bush rack whack through some forest and stuff it's like it makes no sense to me anyway so I'm here at Wapiti shelter there's some really good spots for tents um, uh, yeah, I'm not real big on sleeping in a shelter. Um, I don't know. I think I'd, it just feels insecure to me. I'd rather have all my tent walls around me. Um, it looks like I'm going to be the only one here tonight. Camping out alone in the backcountry by myself at a shelter where two women some years ago were murdered. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not I'm not worried. Someone put in gut hooks that the shelter's haunted by those women. I I don't believe that. I don't believe in uh spirits of the departed or ghosts or whatever. I do believe in spirits, but I serve a god that they answer to in a big way. So, that doesn't worry me. Um all right, it's after four o'clock. It's gonna be getting dark. 
pretty soon because I'm surrounded by mountains and trees that block a lot of light. So I don't even want to fix dinner. I, they say not to fix your food in camp because it could attract bears and um, well, I don't know where you're supposed to go to fix it. Just out in the woods? They don't really explain that. They don't really tell you where you're supposed to prepare your food. You know, set up a, a stove. What, out in the middle of the forest? I, it's a little confusing to me. Um, anyway, I may or may not boil water and eat something. I may just just turn in. I'm going to try and text my family, let them know um, I'm turning in, setting up camp, and so far I'm okay. All right, that's it for day two. Glad it's over. Wish I wasn't the only one here, but what are you going to do? I'm, you know, that experience a little while back, not finding a white blaze and feeling all turned around and lost and whatever. I'm starting to rethink my wanting to avoid the bubble. Um, I've enjoyed meeting people on the trail. The most recent one I met was Jeremiah, a really nice young man, gorgeous long hair, holy cow, wish I had hair that nice. Um, he was heading to New York. He's got a job there waiting for him and he decided to relocate via hiking the trail. And I thought that was pretty awesome. So I guess he's having his stuff trucked up there and, and he's walking up there to New York and that's where he'll get off the trail. Um, but that was pretty cool. Anyway, there's something to be said for the bubble, I think, or at least the outer fringes of the bubble. Um, I don't mind hiking by myself. Um, but at the end of the day, it's nice to have some people around you. It's nice to have some other campers nearby. Maybe I'll get lucky. Lord will answer my prayer and send another hiker to this way tonight. Um, the, uh, the trail is pretty empty right now. There's, I thought there would be more uh, sobos and flip-floppers coming through here right now, but um, no, it's pretty empty and uh, not sure I like that. So I think when I start the second part of my hike next year, um, I think I want to be in that flip-flop bubble. <laughs> uh, I don't like being in camp by myself. I mean, I'm sure I'll be fine. You know, it's just a learning experience, and uh, God is with me, and so I'm not, I am not alone, like the song says. Hills and valleys, I am not alone. Well, it took a while to find a spot that didn't have a bunch of dead limbs and widowmakers hanging over it, but I found a pretty sweet spot for my tent. I think I did a pretty good job setting her up. Yeah, pretty happy. All right, now I'm going to go eat my dinner now that it's probably cold. <laughs> All righty. Well, that took me next door to forever. <laughs> First finding a branch <coughs> that might work, and then getting that rock set. Well, and then it took me forever just to find some rocks that weren't you know, like tips of icebergs with, you know, three or four feet of them probably in the ground. Every time I went to pick up a rock, it just, it wouldn't come up. I finally found a couple of rocks and uh, found a branch that, I don't know, I hope this will work. It's the best I can do. It took me forever to get the rock sack over, over that branch, but here I'll, hmm, hang on. Okay, so that's, <coughs> I hung it PCT style. No, that's not my food bag. That was my rock sack. It's hanging there so I can spot it easy in case I forget where I hung it. And then there's my food bag. And 
There's the branch I hung it from. If a bear tries to climb that tree, it's probably going to break. And then he'll get my food bag. But it's, uh, it's really slim pickings around here. Um, they need to install bear cables, you know, bear bag cables or... Or a box or something because there really is like if this shelter were full I, I don't know where people would be hanging all their bags I really don't but anyways um, so I've had my dinner I've hung my bear bag and hopefully there isn't anything that I forgot to put in there I do have my a water bottle with electrolytes in it and they're lemon lime flavor so now I'm wondering I guess I'll just drink it all and maybe take it off away somewhere and rinse it out with one of my other water bottles. But um, I am so glad I came back here because it's now 5.30. I've been working on camp for an hour and a half. If I, Even if I had gotten to Dismal Falls campsite, It would have been dark before I finished all my camp chores and and everything. <laughs> so I think I've learned that the latest the latest I can really get to a camp. See, I got here at four. It is like four thirty. That's up. If I can't get someplace by four thirty, then I just head to the nearest place. Um, of course, I'll probably get better at this as time goes on. You know. Um, I'll get faster at putting up my tent. <laughs> I set it up, started setting up the first time, and then noticed a little hole in the ground. Like, I don't know, for some kind of critter. It could be a mouse, could be a snake. I don't know what it is. But it's like, that's all I need is for him to come out of his little house and be like, oh, what is this? Let me chew through it and see what, what happens. So... <laughs> I moved my tent over about six inches and then I stuck a big rock on top of that hole, which I will take off tomorrow when I leave. But uh, for now, nothing's coming out of that hole. And um, so I've got a big gear explosion here, big mess I need to clean up. And I think the next order of business is uh, my water bottle with the electrolytes, drink that, get it cleaned out, and then get everything moved to my tent. Um, my bag is a big mess. I need to reorganize it. And um, I've got no signal here, so I can't let my family know where I am. But I told them I probably wouldn't get a signal for the rest of the day because I'm down in a valley surrounded by tall mountains and there's just, there's no signal here. But I'm at Wapiti Shelter. <clears throat> <clears throat> it's a nice little shelter. Lots of space for tents. Lots of space. Not that all of it's ideal. There's a lot of rocks and, and stuff, but I, I found a pretty sweet spot on top of some leaves and uh, no dangerous or potentially dangerous branches on top, um, up on top. Man, that was, that was such a chore getting that bear back hung. Man, I practiced and practiced my knots. You know, I had those down, but man, I really should have practiced tossing that rock sack. That was some work. Yeah, definitely practice throwing your rock sack. Don't just practice the knots, because that does take some skill, which apparently I don't have, <laughs> but I got it done, so I'm happy. Okay. Okay, so I think maybe now this really is good night. My battery's about dead, so I'm going to plug it into my portable charger. Um, but I want to be all tucked inside my tent uh, before it, it gets too dark. Anyway, here I am in camp all by my lonesome. No one else is here. kind of really wish there was somebody else here, but oh well. What are you going to do? i got to learn how to do this um, eventually. Call it a test of faith. I don't like those. <laughs> but unfortunately, they're necessary. So, anyway. 
All right, I think maybe this is good night. Maybe I'll film a little more in my tent. We'll see, but it's goodbye for now. Okay, so I think this will be the last video. One, I'm down to 10% on my phone. Two, I hoisted my portable charger up into the tree with my bear, with my uh, food bag <sighs> because I put it in the ditty bag that also had stuff like toothpaste and whatever and I just I put the whole thing in there without thinking so I won't be able to charge my phone tonight but it's not like I can really use it anyway because no signal no service here at all so I'm just gonna make this last video turn the phone off and um, Anyways, I'm in my tent. All my stuff is all over the place. And I've got my safety stuff over here. I've got my personal alarm, which sounds like a car alarm. It's very loud if a bear comes sniffing by, you know, that should scare the poop out of him. I've got my pepper spray, which, you know, I'm probably not gonna use that in my tent. Uh, my knife, a whistle, I've got my headlamp got my, you know, come and get me out of here thingy. Got my earplugs so I don't hear any noises that are probably harmless but might freak me out. <laughs> so anyways, my first night alone in the wilderness. Um, at least I'm at a shelter site. You know, I'm not like out in the woods in some unofficial campsite. But... I don't know that makes any difference. Um, I imagine it's going to get pretty chilly tonight. Maybe, probably down in the 40s. But So I put this fleece on, but I'm sweating. So I think I'm just going to take this fleece off and just wear my t-shirt. Didn't bother putting on my sleep clothes tonight. No, <laughs> not going to bother. I didn't really sweat in these and stink them up much anyway. But, um, yeah, my sleeping pad feels okay, you know, and I'm pretty tired. I don't even think I'm going to have to take a Benadryl to get to sleep tonight. I'm, I'm pretty wiped out. Anyways, I'm just, uh, I've got no music to listen to, no books to read. It's just me and the sound of nature out there. So I think I'm just going to lay, <coughs> excuse me, lay here for a while and, say some prayers, pray for my family um, and my husband, who's I'm sure worrying about me tonight because he didn't hear from me, but I told him he probably wouldn't, so hopefully he's not worrying too much, but um, we'll definitely be praying for him tonight, and um, yeah, I think this is finally it for day two, um, sun's going down, it's about, I don't know, 6.30, 6.45, I'm not sure, it's somewhere around there. I know that seems really early, but <clears throat> I'm beat. But it's been a good day, sort of. It's been a mostly good day. A couple of monkey wrenches thrown in it, but that's okay. Just gotta roll with the punches. All right, y'all. Um, I will see you in the morning. Good night, finally.